Hi folks, how are you doing? In the second round of the ACP chess tournament in Italy, we had three very interesting games, very different one from another. We had first uh, a long and very instructive end game, a position game. Then we had a very tactical flashing game, which ended in 20 something moves, very tactical craziness there. And then another one in between, uh, an interesting game between Vokaturo and uh, Zoltan Almashi, which was adjourned. Let's start with uh, one of the decisive games of the tournament, of the, uh, of the round. It was played between Nepomniashi, Jan Nepomniashi as white, and Wesley So as black. We saw the English opening, and exactly we had uh, the Mikena's floor variation, very well known. This his exchange here with e5, d4, white takes, black takes, now d takes c3, so, uh, sorry, b takes c3, queen takes on f6, d4, e5, this is very, very well known, knight f3, knight c6, remember the just kind of a, a month, month ago, Krishik and Daronian in Norway played uh, this line. In which uh, the Armenian GM lost his queen uh, with black pieces very early. Bishop g5, this is a very sharp line. Queen to g6, then d5. The knight goes back following that game, Grishuk versus Aronian. h4, now Wesley saw obviously deviates from the Levon's game. He plays h6 in that game in Norway, remember. Aronian played, I think, if I'm not mistaken, d7. And after bishop d3, he played e4, h5. And after queen f5, I think it was rook h4. And after rook f4, the queen was trapped. So Grishuk ended up uh, winning that game with white pieces. So after h4, uh, correctly, Wesley saw plays h6 first. The bishop must go back. Now he gets his knight out. h5, queen to d6, central square for the queen. Bishop d3, bishop e7. Both players keep developing. Now knight to d2 to jump into the beautiful d4 square. So Wesley tries to make it a little difficult. Knight f6, f3. Uh, also denying the knight its own jump to g4. Black just castles and knight d4. Knights are exchanged here. Uh, and okay, white has a strong pawn center here. Slightly bad, bad pawn structure here on the queen side with these doubled pawns. And clearly has not enough um, de development. He hasn't castled yet. This pawn might be a weakness. So, well, this is dynamically balanced, but slightly favorable to black, I would say, because black has completed his development and doesn't have that clear uh, weaknesses. Queen a3, attacking simply c3, so white must defend it somehow. Queen b3 is what Nepomniashi chose, and black doesn't want to exchange queens yet. He goes to a5, keeps the pressure there. Knowing that his position is slightly better, uh, White's king is still in the center. His bishops could do some damage with these open lines, while White bishops are kind of stuck here. Uh, bishop e2 is what Nepomniashi plays. Instead, if he just castles, which looks natural, uh, now bishop g4 is winning the pawn simply on h5. This is now a weak pawn. So he tries to avoid that, playing first bishop e2. But black goes in, activating his bishop. Bishop is c5. If takes, takes. The queen is in a dominant position here, so bishop back. But the problem is that white is not going to castle uh, short anytime soon. And well, the position isn't that comfortable for, for, for white right now. So uh, the re perfect recipe here for black is if white, when white, black's, uh, white's uh, and, uh, king is in the center is try to open lines of the rook in this case to participate in the game. White hurries to uh, mobilize pieces also 
pawn takes, rook takes, king takes, and finally white castles, queenside, king goes back to g8, rook f1, and bishop d7. And well, uh, I mean, white, uh, black won a pawn here. And white has still uh, lots of uh, weaknesses here and there. Not a very coordinated army and tries to go somewhere with king b1. Black now wants to exchange queens, queen b6, but king a1 is played. Well, white, black can still exchange pieces here. Rook f1, or sorry, rook f8. Now rooks are exchanged as well as queens. And we're reaching this endgame with all the bishops, all the four bishops on the board. Black being a pawn up and clearly playing for the win. Both players have damaged a little their pawn structure, doubled pawns here, here, here. But white, black bishops are more active in this position. And we will see now Wesley Soul working hard uh, for the victory. First, it's white's turn, so bishop e1, denying black this active f2 square. King activation, and now a long maneuvering game, bishop a4, white goes to g4, and black goes to g1, bishop g3, attacking the pawn, king d6, bishop back to e2, e3, this is an advanced pawn, not so easy to to make it uh, very dangerous so far, but it's 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 a factor, definitely. King c1, bishop back to e8, constantly trying to uh, improve pieces, relocate them. King d1 and bishop f2. Uh, of course, if white takes, pawn takes. Now this pawn is almost unstoppable because uh, this pawn is also uh, under the protection of this bishop. So. This is almost a, a losing position, I think, for white. So bishop h2, white doesn't exchange that. Now bishop comes to check. Look at this, black pieces dominating white king, all, has only one square to go to. Bishop e1, king b2, and bishop back to h4. Now white plays g4, bishop to f6, king c1, king c5, the king is slowly improving, g5, uh, Nepomniachtchi exchanges some pieces, some pawns here, h takes, now he's going to take the one on e3, this is probably a very good decision because he's, uh, he's spoiling black's pawn structure and taking a dangerous e3 pawn, black bishop to d7 and he takes on e3 with check, king back to d6, black is still up a pawn, king d2, and keeps pushing. Now he's past g pawn. h6, pawn takes, bishop takes, and bishop f5. Black has two passed pawn now. King e3, bishop to h4, a check on f8, bishop e7, but Jan doesn't want to exchange it. We have a repetition of moves. Then after bishop h6, uh, Wesley so decides to keep on playing, plays c6, d takes, pawn takes, bishop f1, after king e6 he goes to g2, attacking on c6, intermediate check with the bishop on c5, king e2, now king back to defend the pawn on c6, bishop g7, attacking weaknesses always, bishop d6, now bishop to f6, trying to hold the position. a2 is a weakness, so it's attacked. a3, and black keeps pushing his pawns. Uh, now if he, can, if he can put the bishop on f4, he'll, he will have an absolute control of the center of the board. So bishop knight goes, uh, sorry, the king goes up to prevent bishop f4. King e6 is attacking the bishop, chasing it away to d8. King f5. Now at this point, black doesn't care about this pawn anymore because he's getting through. He's saw the he's, he has seen the plan uh, to get through, helping with his king with these pawns. Bishop takes. First he takes on a3. 
after king d2 bishop c1 was the threat bishop back to d6 bishop e3 but uh, black offers this exchange of uh, bishops which would help black king to invade through f4 c5 bishop d3 bishop h1 but this is already lost position king e5 bishop g2 and now bishop c4 bishop h1 and finally the winning move g3 uh, white black is going to do a beautiful maneuver with the bishop here to get in through bishop g2 was played but now bishop to e6 and Nepomniachtchi here already resigned as he's he basically is in a kind of a zugzwang he cannot prevent uh, for instance say bishop f1 bishop g4 and if bishop g2 bishop f3 uh, this pawn this bishop is going to be the lost for this pawn like this or if he exchanges black gets a couple of unstoppable connected passed pawns which basically gave Wesley saw, it, Wesley saw the victory in this long and instructive endgame. Let us see the second game, the shortest one, the most spectacular and flashy one, very tactical battle between Emil Sutovsky with white and the always creative Badr Jobava's black. Let us see what happened quickly. Jobava plays the Sicilian, but don't, don't be fooled, not a normal Sicilian, but b6 once again always getting away from the common paths in the opening d4 c takes knight takes he plays bishop b7 knight c3 is defending the pawn and knight f6 is attacking it again seems like a, an amateur way of playing the sicilian maybe it is but you know he's always creative trying to uh, innovate in the openings after thinking for a while, because this is already an original position, Sotovsky plays e5, now knight d5, knights are exchanged, and here, among other options, white has this knight b5, chasing away the bishop. Jobava goes to e6, uh, slightly strange position but he will probably want to play g7 g6 bishop g7 etc uh, if he plays e6 here something like c4 and then the check on d6 may be a little unpleasant but okay after bishop e6 uh, white just plays bishop d3 knight c6 uh, bishop e4 pinning the knight the pawn cannot be taken the rook would be hanging so Jabao plays g6, now bishop g5, bishop g7, uh, pinning this pawn, uh, which is uh, an interesting point. And white castled here. He had a, he had a, white had a very speculative possibility here, a very beautiful check with the knight on d6 as it cannot be taken. The queen would be hanging on d8, thanks to this pin. And certainly looks tempting but the engine says it's really nothing and in fact black is uh, better according to the engine after king f8 white has to protect his e4 uh, e5 pawn now queen b8 getting away from the pin white could sacrifice a piece here and play queen e2 to keep uh, i mean castling long keeping black king forever in the center with a very strong knight on d6 and well, the engine says this is better for black. I think for a human, this is a very unclear position, complicated one. This was a possibility, but Sutovsky uh, rather castled, sacrificing a pawn. Uh, black took on e5, f4, now intermediate h6, and the pieces are exchanged. White takes on e5, h takes on g5. Queen d2. Remember, Black King is still in the center, and it is not clear if it's, if if he if he will be able to castle ever. He just won a pawn, but this is certainly a dangerous position to be in the, with the king in the center and all white pieces developed. Now, Queen b8 was played. Once again, we have some other possibilities. For instance, 
bishop c4 looks tempting attacking the bishop and the rook but now white had for instance bishop d5 and if bishop takes on b5 bishop takes f7 is winning uh, the rook is protecting here this is a crushing attack but if bishop takes f1 rook takes f1 uh, well black could finally castle maybe he has he, he's, he's up material but queen takes on g5 uh, well uh, white has compensation for the exchange i think but not sure if more okay after queen d2 queen b8 was played just getting here to b8 attacking the pawn white takes on g5 now bishop c4 is played attacking both pieces but now a very spectacular sequence starts Knight d6 check, sacrificing a piece, and after e takes d6, the in between a beautiful move, queen f6 hitting h8, also f7, which is so far protected by the bishop. And here, uh, Jobaba makes the mistake. It seems he had to castle here in this complicated position, and white had nothing better than to uh, make a draw with this perpetual. So this was a draw, it seems, according to the engine, but the queen f6, Jobaba plays the rook g8 move, and now e6, very beautiful, and white is winning. Uh, well, first of all, we are attacking f7, so something must be done there. If bishop e6, this was not played, seems to be the best. There is another spectacular move, bishop takes c6, pawn must take, and now rook a1, pinning. Uh, the bishop um, f7 is still under attack the king cannot castle and this is really being uh, up a bishop and the piece uh, uh, sorry a bishop and the pawn black is going to certainly lose this game because all white has is focused against his king but after e6 Jova tried another move he played knight to e5 to defend uh, defend f7 but now e takes check bishop takes and now similar to the previous idea rook a e1 and after only 21 moves Badur Jobaba from Georgia resigned as his king, king is not escaping his fate I mean all white pieces are coordinated to attack him in the center and well just to put it mildly this is over I mean bishop is going to take here and whenever it happens the, the knight is uh, pinned and f7 is going to be hanging etc so Really no way of escaping uh, the defeat here for black. Very flash and spectacular game between Sutovsky and Badur Jobaba. Let's see the last game of the round. It was played between Daniel Vukaturo, Vukaturo from Italy and Zoltan Almashe from Hungary. Vukaturo is white. He plays the Nimzo Indian defense. We reach the so-called Capablanca or classical variation with Queen C2. Black castles, a3, white doesn't want to spoil his pawn structure but moves his queen lots of times in the opening. Black has a great number of possible moves here but he chose d6. Now some normal developing moves like knight f3, b6, e3, bishop b7, a quiet line here, bishop e2, knight to d7 from b8. Black has more or less two ideas here to play either c5 or to try e5 with rook e8, but also has the idea that uh, Almashi plays to jump with the knight on e4, defended of course by the bishop, and this is what usually black gets uh, in compensation for the bishop pair in the Nimzo Indian. A strong uh, piece uh, on e4, a strong control over the e4 square. Uh, what is White's idea here, White's plan? Well, he plays knight e1 to try to kick this knight out of here with f3. Black plays queen h4 to try uh, to have some counter, counterplay here, some activity on the king side. f3, knight g5, and well, Black could, for instance, take, White could, do, for instance, play something like before but black's plan is pretty much clear here 
Rook f6 is possible to try to attack white king. So Avocatur himself tries to open up lines for his pieces. He plays c5. Sorry, here. Instead of before, he plays c5. Now d takes. D takes. And after b takes, he plays b4. Trying to, well, sacrificing in this case a pawn to complete development and open up lines for his own pieces. Here, c takes b4 is not good for queen takes c7. But instead, after b4, well, Massey just keeps calm. He plays rook to f6, stacks with his, sticks with, to his plan. Now, bishop b5 attacks the knight, rook h6 attacking h2, threatening. I guess it's checkmate or something, but I don't know if it's finally checkmate, but certainly looks very dangerous to let white to, uh, black take here. So g3 attacks the queen and defend h2. Now knight h3 check, king h1, and having created some weaknesses here on white's king side, the queen is attacked, so it goes back to the center to defend the knight. Queen e7. e4. White is trying to open up lines for his bishop pair. Now rook h5, e takes, rook takes, and bishop d3. Seems a difficult situation now for black, because uh, white is attacking with the bishop the rook, h7 is under fire, and the natural uh, move at the first side, like rook h5, is not working, because now g4, uh, the rook must go somewhere, uh, white is taking h7, and later he will have ideas like bishop e4, very dangerous. So the most practical uh, chance for black here is to sacrifice the exchange with rook a f8. Bishop took, rook took, and now king comes back into life with king g2. Knight to g5, the bishop takes the knight, queen takes, and rook d1 attacking the unprotected knight on d7 and also preparing to exchange queens on d2, remember white is up exchange, although it's for a pawn, knight goes to e5, uh, under ha some heavy pressure, putting under some heavy pressure the f3 pawn, Bla this is black's counterplay, compensation for the material, uh, white's king is slightly weak, and black has a very good coordination here on the king side, attacking white king, queen d2, uh, black doesn't want to exchange queens so far because uh, he has to keep trying to attack. Now queen d8 check, rook f8, and queen e7 hitting several things like e6, uh, c7. Precise move here by uh, black, bishop d5, and white has to play um, something like king g1 correctly because if he goes greedy and takes on c7, now suddenly a very beautiful move. Knight g4 with multiple threats. Like, first of all, this pawn is pinned, cannot take because the king would be in check. White is, uh, black is threatening checkmate here on h2 with the knight and the queen. And the knight is also threatening to jump into e3 with a very beautiful fork on three pieces. So this would be unbearable for white. This is, uh, must be absolutely crushing. So, Okaturu just being very cagey here, goes back to g1. Now pawns are exchanged here, and h6, g4, queen f7. Now black is giving white the queen's exchange. Rook a1 attacking a7, c6, h3. We're reaching an end game in which each rook is going to take pawn here. Uh, once again, uh, white is up an exchange, but black has a pawn to compensate the exchange. f4, knight g6, f5, knight back to f4. This is protected by the rook. f takes, bishop takes, rook a3, and bishop d5. I think a roughly balanced endgame, and at this point the players adjourned the game, but as I saw this morning, I think they later agreed it was a draw. The computers, their computer agreed it was a draw. And they did it so during uh, the football slash soccer World Cups final. Daniel Vecatur and Zoltan Almashi. So this game was a draw finally. And there it goes. This was the recap of the second round. 
of this ACP Golden Classic. Test room and hope you liked it and thanks for watching.